Are you wondering about the role of iodine in your health? Where does it work in the body and how might it help you? How do you figure out if you need extra iodine? Are you consuming enough in your diet? Do you even need iodine? How do you know if you need iodine? What do you do when you're questioning your iodine status? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're gonna look at some of these questions around iodine. How do you know from a sign or symptom standpoint? What tests can you do to figure out if you need more iodine? And what makes one curious about their iodine status? Why would you even think to be evaluated for iodine deficiency. So if you like this type of information about nutrients, diet, health related questions, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this related to health, nutrients, etc. All right, let's look at this question. How do you know if you need iodine? So how do you know if you need iodine? There's a few different ways to understand when someone might need iodine. And I'm gonna be covering the ways that I approach considering giving someone iodine tests and symptoms that come to mind when I think about giving someone iodine. The first thing though is to mention that iodine is essential, so we all need it. So really what we're gonna be discussing in this video is how do you know if you need more iodine outside of what you're getting from your diet? And there's two main things to look at or categories of things, and that is like signs and symptoms and then actual testing. On the testing, side, there's direct and indirect measurements, and there are other measurements and assessment techniques that suggest iodine deficiency. With any of these tests, you want to look at how likely it is that you're going to get an accurate result, what the sensitivity and specificity is for that in terms of detecting the people that actually do have iodine deficiency. So the first thing that comes to mind when I'm considering treating someone for iodine deficiency and or testing is do they have any hypothyroid signs or symptoms? Most of the iodine in our bodies is is used for the thyroid up to somewhere around 90%. So when we're looking at, you know, do you need more iodine? It's usually going to be signs and symptoms of hypothyroid because that's where most of the iodine is used in our bodies. In the U.S., most people are getting plenty of iodine because it's going to come from f food sources like salt specifically. So if you're using prepared foods like soups and things like this, or even eating out on a regular basis, you're probably getting plenty of iodine because most places use iodized salt. The other thing is it's going to be in some vegetables and other plants that we consume, especially if they're grown close to the coastal areas, that's where most of the iodine is naturally occurring because of its proximity to the ocean. Similarly, seafood, uh, seaweed, things like this have lots of iodine, and you really don't need a ton of iodine uh, as long as you've been maintaining over time. It's when you are, you know, not getting enough from your daily activity. Eventually, your stores go down, 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 or in some cases, you do need more based on environmental things. So if you have signs and symptoms of hypo hypothyroid, so actual labs that show hypothyroidism or s signs and symptoms like fatigue, constipation, things like that, there's lots of hypothyroid symptoms. I'm not going to go into all of them, but hypo you can look up hypothyroid symptoms. And then the other thing is like your intake of some of these foods that I just discussed. So if you don't use iodized salt, you don't eat out, have kind of more of a restrictive diet, don't eat pre prepared foods like things that are already packaged and likely don't have a lot of iodine in them for from lack of salt. If you're someone that uses Himalayan sea salt that is not iodized, some of them are, most of them are not. So if you have kind of a more controlled diet, you may be restricting some of the foods that have iodine in them. Those are some of the dietary lifestyle things that make me think someone might have iodine deficiency and some of the symptoms and some sign that with the hypothyroid uh, labs that suggest you may need more iodine. And that would make me think you want to do more testing. So if you don't have thyroid labs done, I would consider doing a TSH and T4. Low T4, high TSH is an indicator of iodine deficiency because you need the iodine in order to make thyroid hormone. That is what your T4 is made up of, is iodine and other molecules. So I mentioned that most of the iodine is used for thyroid hormone production, but some of it is used in other tissues, like in particular bre breast tissue, where it is thought to support healthy breakdown of estrogen. And so if you're someone with fibrocystic breast disease, that may also be a sign or symptom that you might want to be evaluated for iodine deficiency. It may be a sign or symptom that you need more. And those signs and symptoms, you know, low T4 or high TSH, things like this, those are all in the context of, you know, what does your diet look like? Because no test is 100% sensitive or specific, it's best to use multiple ways to evaluate and look at this question of how do I know if I need more iodine? As a general rule, 90% of the iodine that's consumed in your, in your daily diet gets excreted through the urine. The other 10% is used for making thyroid hormones 
hormone and any other tissues that may need extra iodine. Because of this, urinary iodine is a very sensitive and specific way to test for iodine deficiency. If the level excreted is low, that means you're deficient in iodine. You're deficient in the amount that you're consuming on a daily basis. This obviously suggests that your diet leading up to the test and the day of the test potentially is devoid in iodine. Urinary iodine is one of the better tests for detecting iodine deficiency, but it may not be covered by your insurance even though it is the better test. This test is done usually in the morning, first morning void, and you would want to avoid any extra supplemental iodine in the form of a supplement before the before you do the test. And if you do do this urinary test, you want to make sure it is a mass spectrometry test. Usually they are, but that's the kind of gold standard to make sure you're getting the most accurate result. There's also a whole blood iodine where they check the plasma serum levels of iodine in it. Just like with the urinary iodine test, you do want to avoid taking extra supplemental iodine before the test because it's obviously going to be high. The idea too is that when you're taking iodine on a regular basis, your tissue levels are getting saturated. And then when you go to do the test, you should have a much higher overall baseline for the blood test will show up as, you know, a more normal level as you're consuming more iodine. And then for the urinary test, you're going to excrete more because less is going to be sucked up by the tissues. So in the blood test, a low or low normal level suggests iodine deficiency, especially in the context of hypothyroid symptoms or actual hypothyroidism. There's also a urinary iodine challenge test. This test in theory accounts for goitrogens. Now goitrogens are the things that can prevent iodine uptake by the thyroid cells. The idea with this is you take a large bolus, several milligrams of iodine, and you see what the urinary iodine is that comes out. Now as mentioned previously, 90% of what you consume should go out through the urine and 10% goes to the cells and tissues, mostly the thyroid. So if 90% of what you consume goes out through the urine, it assumes that your cells and tissues are adequately saturated. However, if very little iodine comes out after you do the challenge, it assumes that some of that iodine is displacing because of the large quantity, some of those goitrogens, and then the tissues are becoming more saturated and less goes out through the urine. So what are goitrogens? Well, these are things like fluoride, chloride, glucososinolates. Glucososinolates are from uncooked cruciferous vegetables. So they are in cooked cruciferous vegetables as well, but just to a lesser amount. So it's best if you're going to be eating those to, to cook them first. And it's usually going to be when you're consuming large copious amounts of these things, you know, using fluoride on a very regular basis and getting chloride from wherever, pools, etc., where it's going to lead to interference with the thyroid uptake. I've also heard of an empirical test where you drop iodine on your skin uh, and see if it how long it absorbs. I don't recommend using this method and don't use this method myself. I just thought I would mention it. It's not really sensitive and it's not very specific. Mainly in my practice, I use the combination of looking at diet in c conjunction with signs and symptoms of hypothyroid and go from there. And if you're low, then we gradually supplement. Now there is a separate video on looking at whether or not you have excess iodine and some things to consider with that. So probably wanna check out that video as well. I'll have links to some of the articles that discuss iodine and how you know if you need iodine. All right, that should do it for this question. How do you know if you need iodine? Keep in mind, this is how I evaluate patients to determine if I think they need iodine. There are other ways, techniques, and ways to look at this question, but I found this useful for my patients and you might as well. If you do have any questions about the content of the video, please drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that, or just let me know what your experience is with iodine testing. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.